Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I cannot thank you all enough for coming today, and uh, I'm thrilled that we're able to um, have uh, this, this gathering uh, under these circumstances. Today, we're going to be talking about keeping your business alive during COVID-19. Uh, and we're going to talk about different ways in which, um, uh, in which you guys can um, sort of cope with this difficult moment uh, and different tips and tools and resources that are available to you um, for uh, helping to, uh, to, to, to deal with um, this kind of unprecedented crisis. I wanted to just talk a little bit about what you can expect from today's session. Uh, really appreciate it if you can stay till the end. Uh, I know uh, this hour of time is incredibly uh, uh, valuable to you and I am gonna make sure to give you as much as I can during this hour. Um, we're going to talk with three different businesses um, to get some tips from the trenches of what's working and not uh, for some of these um, other companies in town. These are, um, all three of them are retail or storefront businesses. These are businesses that actually run physical operations. Um, not too unlike uh, BizHack Academy, which um, has uh, been traditionally an in-person training academy. We've now converted completely online, and you'll see some really creative ways in which these businesses are doing the same. Um, I'm gonna share with you three, you know, really simple, but I think important marketing principles uh, that I hope will help you adapt to this sudden shift in consumer behavior. And I'll talk a little bit about what that shift is and then what those principles that I would recommend you keep in mind um, as you're thinking about what the heck to do with your, yourself and your business. Uh, and then finally, um, we have uh, collected a tremendous number of resources to help small businesses weather the storm. We're going to have a representative from Miami-Dade County on the call uh, who's going to share uh, some of the general small business resources that the local, state, and federal government is making available. Um, and then we've actually curated a list of digital marketing resources. A lot of software companies, Google, Facebook, um, are making available um, resources and funding to help small businesses. And, and this is a great opportunity for you uh, to take advantage of that. Um, for those of you who don't know me already, uh, my name is Dan Gretsch and I'm the founder of BizHack Academy. Um, my background is actually as a journalist and uh, I was for many years on public radio. Uh, I was the news director at WLRN Miami Herald News. I hosted a show on public radio called Under the Sun. Um, I was also in Marketplace, the national business show. So for me, this kind of setting is very reminiscent of a hour long call in radio show. Um, and so in many ways I've structured this in, in a similar way. Um, we've already solicited through a survey that many of you filled out and thank you for filling that out. Some of your um, input on what's going on uh, and then we have lined up uh, several special guests, three different businesses and a county representative who we're gonna be hearing from during this hour. Um, so it's kind of like a little radio show. Um, I was uh, part of a Pulitzer Prize winning team when I was back at the Miami Herald, uh, kind of one of the, uh, I call it the award for being in the right place at the right time, but a highlight of my journalism career. And then I transitioned more recently into communication and marketing for businesses where I've worked both at two software startups and a billion dollar energy company. Uh, and I'm a proud uh, Princeton and FIU uh, graduate, go Panthers. So um, I'm a, I've been in this community for more than two decades and uh, my attempt here is to give back. Uh, this community has been uh, incredibly good to me, uh, to my family, to my business. And my hope is that you will get as much out of this next uh, hour as possible that will be helpful to you as you guys are figuring out how to weather this storm. So a little bit more about BizHack. BizHack uh, was uh, named a startup of the year in 2019 by the Miami Herald uh, and we were part of the 10,000 Small Business Accelerator Program. We partnered with the major educational institutions in South Florida including uh, the Idea Center at Miami-Dade College, Startup FIU, and the Innovation Hub at Broward College. We have dozens and dozens of community partners in the nonprofit, foundation, and business space. And um, I think really our signature achievement and what makes me so proud uh, of what BizHack has accomplished and also the impact that we're having in this community 
is we run a 12 week program that's about uh, helping businesses generate leads and sales online. Um, and last year we had more than 100 businesses run through the program. They spent $17,000 in advertising online and they made more than half a million dollars for the local economy. Um, this is something that uh, it drives everything we do. We are basically here to help you learn how to market yourself and communicate about yourself online and make more money by doing so well. And the folks that we're gonna have here, um, uh, starting with Raphael Sabino of Ascendance Studios, uh, are all folks who've gone through our program uh, and then uh, taken what they learned and uh, used it um, for their businesses. Um, Raphael Sabino is from one of our earliest cohorts of BizHack. Um, he runs a dance studio called Ascendance Studios um, in Doral, Florida, in Doral. And um, they've really been very aggressive and creative uh, in turning Ascendance, which has always been, uh, you know, an in-person dance studio, uh, into a virtual one. Uh, I'm actually uh, happy to say that my seven-year-old daughter, uh, whose own dance studio here where I live in Surfside wasn't offering online classes, uh, got a chance to enjoy a jazz class la last night, um, and she was just beaming afterwards. So, um, you know, here are examples of some of the posts that they're putting on social media as they communicate about this change. Um, one of the things that I think is really cool about Raphael, he's very tech savvy, he's a former Amazon employee, and their communications are almost exclusively through text message and through an app. Um, and so we're going to invite him now uh, to chat. Um, and one of the things that um, he'll talk about is how he's communicating with his parents. So Raphael Sabino, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Dan. How, how are you guys doing today? Good, good, good. So, Raph, let's talk about how you have uh, changed your products and services uh, as a result of Corona-19, uh, COVID-19. Yeah, so, so for us, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a difficult transition, right? We, we depend on being in, in person and massive gatherings to, to run our business, right? So, um, since uh, Miami Public shut down uh, their, their school programs, you know, we, we kind of have to the principal thing for us to do was to follow uh, them, right? And at that point, um, you know, you, you have to find a way to, to, to continue uh, delivering, you know, classes, right? And that's when, when, when we figure, well, we, we have to move to digital. It's going to be a little odd at the beginning, but, uh, but if we get people to, we, we did like a little MVP, I call it, right? Through Instagram Live classes, right? Right, a minimally viable product. Yes, yes. And just uh, a quick, quick, for those of you who don't know, the idea of a minimally viable product is spending as little time and money as possible to test the concept to see if it works. Go ahead, Raph. Exactly. So, so the idea was to kind of test the, the concept of online through Instagram uh, live classes, right? And then eventually, uh, if we get good reception, move some of our classes uh, fully online um, and, and, Obviously, it's not, it's not going to be as, um, you know, uh, as profitable as it might be to run our in-person classes. But in this time, uh, you just have to find a way to kind of mitigate your losses, right? So that was kind of the, the plan. What has worked and what has not in terms of the new products and services that you're offering? So in general, um, I think our, so, so we have two different programs, right? We have our competition kits and, and those have been, you know, in general, they're like, seven and up i'll say seven yeah. years old and up and that has been really successful like since day one you know the kids know the platforms they're very you know they're on instagram all day so for them it was an easy transition right uh, now with the when, when we run into a little bit of an issue is with the little ones right because we we depend on the mom to be able to manage the technology so we can deliver the class, right? Yeah. So, you know, we had questions like, oh, how, what is Instagram like? You know, like, how, what app do I have to download to see that, right? So, so there has been some, even though Instagram is fairly popular, uh, you know, some people simply don't use it as much, right? And they're not as familiar, right? So, so that has been definitely a challenge. Uh, and then on the second phase, right, uh, where we kind of, our Instagram classes were open for the community. So any, anyone could join. 
on the second phase of the test, we, we kind of open our own classes, but only to our customers, right? So we offer more than 100 classes every week. Uh, so how do I get people to be in the right Zoom call or chat room or virtual classroom, you know, while we're running three or four classes at the same time? So, you know, people joining into the wrong classroom and, you know, not showing up on time, not muting right. their, their microphones. Right. So, so. so a couple questions. Um, you know, I use, so when BizHack transitioned to online, uh, we used um, uh, Zoom, which is what we're using right now for this gathering. Uh, you, um, who actually were featured by Google in a national ad campaign for your skilled use of Google AdWords to grow your business, uh, you guys have cho chosen to use a different tool, a tool that I wasn't aware of until you told me about it, called Google Meet, which yeah. is part of the Hangout offering that they have, but specifically geared for like webinars and, and online classes. You want to talk about Google Meet uh, and as well as the uh, other technology tools that you're using, um, like for instance, your text messaging software. I'd love to hear more about um, uh, what you're using to stay in touch with your, your um, and communicate with your, your customers. Right, so, so I think, in, in, you know, nowadays there are pretty much two options, right? You either go with Zoom or, you know, there's Google Meet so that it's not as famous, but for us it made more sense because behind Google Meet, uh, there's an entire product called Google Classroom. Okay, and Google Classroom is uh, Google's effort to, uh, you know, sh be able to share lessons from any teacher around the world, right? So it doesn't matter if you're in the U.S. or in the U.K., you can join a class of someone that is teaching online, right? Um, so, uh, so since we, we decided to use Google Classrooms, right, the default, you know, meeting tool will be Google Meet, right? And, and then what we do is we, we're hosting all of our content, right? So, um, you know, we, we ask our teachers to record themselves and do their choreography, right? Like whatever we're preparing for recital, right? We have specific videos that we uploaded to Google Classrooms, right? For the little yeah. ones, we uploaded materials like, you know, something for them to draw that mom can print at home and they, you know, they can, you know, paint, you know, be drawing a ballerina or painting, you know, those kind of things. Right. right. And also we, we have, um, you know, like messages for them, right? Like, don't, don't be sad. You know, we'll be back. Like at the end of the day, we, we wanted to keep the kids as engaged as possible. Right. And Google classrooms set up, uh, help us out, organize, uh, all the content that we have by ages and by different classes. Okay. Right. So you have so, Google Classroom, Google Meet for the action. So Google Classroom is the learning management system to right. manage all the materials. Uh, Google um, Meet is how you're actually doing the live chats. And tell us about how you're um, staying in touch via text message. Right. So, so the other thing, you know, we have everyone's email, right? And, and we can just send an email with the link of the, to the classroom, right? Uh, but honestly, you know, email it's 50 50 right like if they might, it might go into their spam box they might give me their spam email because they don't want to you know <laughs> get emails from us whatever you know like there's like a zillion things that can go wrong with email right however text messages is more direct people usually only have one phone number right and uh text messages are just you know very personal right so what we do is every day around this time, we send them a text message with the link to their classroom, okay? So all they have to do is just press on that, right? And, uh, and open up their classroom and join the class. You know, we, we're just trying to make it as friction, frictionless as possible, uh, such that they, they, they join the, our, our online classes. Yeah, and I mean, this is not a small task because if you have 100 classes and I would imagine hundreds and hundreds of parents that are uh, to get them the right link just in time is not a simple technical challenge, but you had that infrastructure built so that it's. Yeah, we, we had it. So, so every single class that we, we have, we, we teach, we, we, we group them, you know, every student by class. Right. And then we have the ability to message that class, you know, in a heartbeat. So what we do is we, in, in the back end of our, of, of our software, we assign a link to the virtual classroom uh, per each class. And then, you know, three, four hours before the class, the system will automatically message them, um, you know, with the, the location of their virtual meeting. 
Yeah. On top of that, we we um, we build and in our website we have a schedule uh, where people can just go in and um, and click on on you know they they can just filter by program age or teacher and they can find out the link too. So we have a couple of ways for them to kind of find that out. Um, perfect. Um, Lilia, there was a question about what phone number to dial in using. Um, if you could put that into the group chat, that would be great. And Andrea Richard was asking, which text messaging platform are you using? So we use Twilio in our back end to, to handle all of our text messages. And then um, we also, uh, our, our automation is powered by Autopilot HQ. Great. So Autopilot HQ is where the, the day, this is just for the, for the folks on the line, is, is, the, is where the automation is and the flows and the, and the database of customers is kept. And then Twilio is the, the technology that actually enables the integration. That delivers the text message. And then you also mentioned Google Classroom for, as an LMS. Uh, yeah. And you also mentioned Google Hangouts Meet. Um, Raph, we're going to move on, uh, but please stay, uh, stay close uh, by because we'll probably bring you into the conversation. Um, you know, I, um, we have a capacity of 100 people and we're up to 96. I'm starting to get a little nervous because uh, we <laughs> never expected uh, this many folks uh, to, to join us. But uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody uh, will. Uh, anyway, you guys uh, are, are, are here and that's what matters most. So. Uh, here we go. I'm going to just uh, share my screen again. So I wanted to give you guys some data about how marketing has changed during COVID-19. Um, you know, I was thinking about this. Marketing is about meeting your customers where they are. What do I mean by that? If your customers are on Instagram, you meet them on Instagram. You, you communicate with them on Instagram. If your customers, like Raph said, prefer text message over email, you text message them and you figure out the tools to do that in an efficient way, in a scalable way. That in its essence is what communications and marketing and digital marketing is all about at its core. What makes this challenging in general is that people's behaviors change with time. So TikTok is an, a platform that young people love that wasn't around even five years ago. Snapchat emerged um, and uh, became popular and now is a little less popular. Instagram has boomed. So the, the, the landscape of how you communicate just during normal times is constantly shifting. And this is hard for resource constrained, constrained not necessarily marketing savvy small businesses to keep up with. COVID-19 blew up this whole framework. People now have completely changed their behavior overnight. This lockdown in home, this quarantine, if you will, has changed how all of us are behaving online and offline. And your marketing must change with it. Um, I wanted to give a couple of examples uh, uh, of the profound ways in which people are now um, shifting uh, their behaviors and how marketing has uh, had to adapt with it. So as you all know, working from home is now the norm. Uh, we've actually created a tools sheet that we're going to be sharing with you at the end of the webinar um, uh, with um, a list of some great tools that you can use if you're in the process of converting to telework. Uh, that'll be in an email follow-up for everybody who registered for this. Um, not surprisingly, internet usage has skyrocketed, uh, which is putting a strain and internet um, download times are slowing down because of it. Facebook has seen a 50% increase uh, in messaging across all of its platforms. Now remember, Facebook includes Facebook Messenger, Instagram messaging, and WhatsApp. Uh, they own all of those, and they've seen a 50% increase in communicating across their messaging platforms. But interestingly, their online advertising has plunged. And I have another slide that will help understand that. Email open rates have spiked. People are sitting in front of their computers, and they're more attentive to their email. And overall, worldwide, we're seeing a 5-plus percent spike in email open rates. 
Uh, so if it was at 20% before, it's at 25% now. In other words, now is a very good time for you to be email marketing. The ad spend by e-commerce companies has doubled, and I would expect that it'll increase even faster. So an e-commerce company is simply a company that sells online. Um, and obviously, if you sell online and now is your moment, you're going to spend even more on advertising um, to, to get to that audience that is stuck at home and can't go out to buy things. Now, B2B or business to business companies, companies that sell to other companies, um, have traditionally relied on things like trade shows, in-person meetings, and phone calls um, for their sales process. They're increasingly now looking uh, to digital marketing to help with that. They have not been um, early adopters by and large, B2B companies in the uh, digital marketing space, um, but they're now looking to places like uh, LinkedIn um, and uh, you know email marketing, um, phone calls, of course, uh, to start driving more uh, of their sales. Uh, this is just a, a tiny slice of the changes that we're starting to see. Um, one point I just wanted to make is, as with Facebook, while you're seeing more usage of the platform, you're seeing a decrease in advertising on the platform, as many businesses don't have a product to sell right now, uh, or that they're uh, not comfortable with selling during a time when everybody's in crisis. So you're seeing a lot of people putting on pause their traditional campaigns um, and starting to uh, really promote what community service or resources that they're offering to help during this time. Um, Jennifer Hudson mentioned that um, it's really nice news on email. She's a marketing uh, and communications specialist. So yeah, absolutely. Email marketing is really having its moment right now. By the way, email marketing and search engine optimization are the two most profitable forms of advertising uh, of digital marketing. So those of you who think that email is dead, it's not true at all. It's actually along with search engine optimization, which is driving people to your website, the most profitable form of uh, marketing. And it's even more so right now. It's getting a huge boost right now. Other platforms that like aren't doing as well um, are things like, and I'm talking now about traditional platforms, um, you know, radio, which is largely listened to in the car, is probably going to see a decrease in listenership. TV is going to see a spike in listenership. Um, other types of advertising online through, they sometimes call it over the top, through things like Netflix and, uh, and Comcast, we're going to see more advertising on TV as people watch more TV because uh, they're home all the time. Uh, billboards, like physical billboards on the highways. This is not a great time to have a billboard on the highway. Um, I think this is actually going to be an incredible moment for direct mail. Uh, you know, just talking about traditional marketing now. You know, people are at home. They're probably checking their mail more closely. I think direct mail is going to be a great opportunity. Um, and direct mail, believe it or not, uh, has seen a increase in its effectiveness in, in the last few years because fewer people are using it. So your, in, your mailboxes are less crowded, your physical mailboxes. So direct mail is actually a really uh, great opportunity. Um, by the way, I wanted to also mention that you're going to be getting a uh, link to this presentation um, in an email follow-up to everybody who registered. So uh, you can take notes, of course, but you don't need to. You'll be getting these slides shortly. Now, uh, there was a survey of almost 16,000 businesses. And this is a list of those businesses that have been most impacted uh, by COVID-19. Um, nonprofits and charities, health and medical, business management, finance, beauty and personal care, on-demand media, that's like Netflix, uh, uh, also social media, greetings, gifts, and flowers. Those are the ones that are seeing a boom in their business. Um, they're, they're, these, are, these are industries that are right now busier than ever and enjoying a, a, a lot more uh, business. Um, the bad is uh, real estate, as a lot of people hold off on big purchases. Home improvement, same idea. Home furniture, same idea. So people right now are holding on to cash and avoiding big purchases just because we don't know how long this is going to last. Same thing with cars and automotive. Retail, a lot of these businesses are shut down. Some of the ideas that we're going to be talking about are ways that retailers can move into e-commerce, which we saw are, is having its moment. 
jobs and education and legal services. Um, with legal services, you know, unfortunately, bankrupt, bankruptcy attorneys are going to have a field day. Um, my guess is divorce attorneys are going to probably have a lot of business coming up as we're all stuck with our wives and husbands uh, who we might not have liked that much. Um, you know, th there's there, but other types of law, uh, transactional law, for instance, uh, litigation, which involves having to be in a courtroom that's shut down. You know, there, there are different parts of the legal practice that are going to be uh, struggling. Um, the, uh, the ugly travel and tourism, um, they say that Florida is going to be the most impacted by COVID-19 of any state in the country. And it's because our travel tourism industry uh, is such a huge part of our local economy. Bars and restaurants are shut down. Uh, we do have a restaurant uh, owner, uh, Anna Robbins of 222 Taco, who's going to be presenting, who's actually seen um, a, a steady, uh, steady flow of business through her takeout offerings. Uh, we'll have her tell us about that momentarily. You know, live entertainment, conferences, events, trade shows, anything that involves in person is going to be uh, struggling for a good while. You know, sports, uh, it's kind of shocking to think about, you know, major sports teams shut down. Uh, you know, the NBA canceled its season and so forth. Fitness, um, I think is going to be more of a mixed bag. You know, I think, you know, for those of us who have kids at home who love dancing, you know, Raphael hopefully will be able to reach an audience that maybe doesn't live in Doral, but is thirsty for those kinds of classes that he's now offering. Building and construction uh, and industrial and manufacturing. So the point here is a couple things. Number one, there is not one impact of COVID-19. It depends based on the industry and even within industries, like we talked about legal services, it depends on which aspect you're offering. Um, so, you know, if you're in the fitness area, um, you know, as Michael Pace brought up, Peloton, the uh, online platform and the at-home uh, bikes, uh, spin bikes and other uh, equipment is doing well. Um, Willie brought up that beauty and personal care are shut down indefinitely uh, because we service the public. Um, so beauty and personal care that's sold like product based um, is going to do well. Um, so if you have products that you're selling, they're doing very, very well. But if you are like a nail salon, you're in real trouble. Uh, so that's another example um, of, um, you, know, an, a, you know, an area where in the, in the beauty and personal care, there are some folks doing better uh, than others. Uh, direct mail, Ariel brought up a point. Uh, that it's work, it works as long as we're still delivering the mail. And um, in some places in Europe, they've shut down mail delivery. So that is a risk that you might take if you do decide to go to the direct mail route. But at least for now, uh, mail is still being delivered. And I think direct mail is definitely a marketing channel you should be thinking about. So I want to bring now uh, Anna Robbins from Tutu Taco. Um, Anna, if you could go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, 222 Taco, uh, Anna Robbins was part of our cohort 12, the most current cohort. She runs at, she was one of the, uh, 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 she was behind the founding of Coyo Taco, and now her newest concept is a Cali Mexican uh, restaurant, a fast casual restaurant called 222 Taco. It's in North Bay Village, uh, which is in, uh, basically in the north of Miami Beach, but along the barrier islands. And uh, Anna has been um, doing really, uh, well uh, with her takeout service. Um, they're doing curbside takeout um, in boxes that are actually coronavirus safe. Um, and one of my favorite things is I saw on her social media, uh, oh wait, you're still, you're delivering margaritas? Is there a maximum quantity order? Um, so they're now delivering margaritas to go, uh, something they weren't allowed to do before. Um, and they have a margarita bar. Uh, and trust me, I think a lot of people are taking advantage of that. So, um, uh, Anna, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. No problem. So talk to us a little bit about the new products and services that you're offering to your uh, customers around takeout and delivery uh, to help meet the demand for uh, your, you know, Mexican food. Well, basically, we had to switch everything over to takeout and delivery. Um, we decided to do an extra level of packaging. Those are the cardboard boxes you're seeing. Before we used to just use them for catering and big, bigger orders. Now every order 
that's placed uh, in house, whether it's through the phone or whether someone comes in, comes in a box. Right. So it's sealed within the box and then we put it inside the cardboard box and tape it up so that people are feeling secure that, that, their, that their food is safe. Um, we had to switch to all um, to take out and delivery and kind of change up our menu a little bit. So items that don't travel as well, we took off. We made a more consolidated menu to take pressure off the kitchen because right now we can only work with one cook at a time because of labor uh, issues. And we are still in the process of putting together a new menu with all of our larger offerings with big boxes, big family style, which we were doing in the past, but we weren't promoting as much where you can order a box with a pound of chicken and a dozen tortillas and all your sides and kind of build everything at home. Also working on combo boxes that will begin rolling out so we can have a special of the week where you get maybe a quesadillas, guac and chips and some rice and beans, trying to make it fun and of course very visual. We've been doing photo shoots and shooting videos and trying to get, we're getting ready to launch all of our online campaigns and then we'll start running digital ads for all of that and also needing to launch online ordering. So all of these things are kind of in the works. Let's hope they'd be done by today, but it's kind of a lot when you have to change everything overnight. So once the online ordering is set up, we'll run the ads where when people see it, they'll be targeted to our local community. They'll be able to click, go straight to our website and from there order um, their boxes for either takeout and delivery and trying to do all this to steer them away from ordering with Uber Eats and Postmates while we love our delivery partners they do take 30 percent so right now is not the the time for that so it's also educating um our clients through messaging that in the most pc way to sway them to order directly in house and not order through uh, the delivery partners you know that that's actually a really good point because it brings up uh something that marcelo salop asked which is how is this impacting your margins so you're selling the food. Oh, you, you broke product. up for a sec. Can you repeat? Oh, okay. um, how is this impacting your margins? You're selling the the same um, uh, you know the, the same price for the food, but you have now um, the the box that you need to deliver it in. Sometimes Postmates to share the fee with. How how is this uh, for your margins? So we right now we're including a service charge that we were including um, for table service that was going mostly to the servers. Now the service charge is being included. Some of that is going back to the house to cover things like the extra packaging um, and just the expenses of staying open without having the dining room open. I mean, this is we're only on the second week, so accountants still in the process of of analyzing all of that. Yeah, it's gonna. Do you expect the margins to be lower, or with the fee, you're gonna basically make the same amount per order? I think the fee, I think the fee will will offset it. Right. How much is the oh, fee is it a per order fee? Or is it based on is like a percentage of the price? It's a percentage of the price. Yeah, it's eighteen percent. Some of that goes towards the server or towards the team, whoever's working that day, and some because some people come in and they don't uh, leave a tip when they get a takeout order. Uh, yeah. And they're not realizing right now that my staff that is actually coming to work and, you know, taking that risk being out in the public when they are coming to work that they deserve, you know, to get tipped. Like their, their hourly is only a, is a minimum wage tipped employee hourly at 550. So if people, if people don't leave a tip for them, then they're really not making anything Then I have to subsidize that again, that's hitting the margins. So the service charge is also ensuring that the staff is being taken care of and there I haven't had any complaints I mean I'm, I'll, I'll take it off if a customer doesn't agree to it but from what I'm seeing they agree and then they also tip extra and they're very they're very grateful that we're open that we're there feeding them that we have um, stepped up our packaging they love the boxes they, they feel secure with it so I haven't had any pushback there and if anything people are trying to support they'll come and they'll order a shot of tequila or a margarita while they're waiting for their for their box we're also now selling the margaritas by the liter uh, the margaritas we have set up in a draft machine so they come and they'll take a liter home put it in the fridge and that's awesome you know Bay Harbor Islands where you're based has been supportive of you North uh, Bay Village I'm sorry, North Bay Village, sorry. North Bay Village, where you're based, um, is, has been very supportive of you. Could you talk a little bit about how the local town is, is being helpful and, um, and in terms, because you're obviously going to be servicing for takeout and pickup 
the local community. Exactly. I mean, from the beginning, the first day when we got the announcement that we had to close the dining room, the mayor showed up to order food for his family. And I actually mentioned to him that we'd be actually he he came two days before the whole shutdown happened and he said yeah i'll be in your commercial so if you see the the, the little clip that you had posted that you showed at the beginning that's on facebook and it's on instagram in the first clip uh the second the second uh scene we're bringing food out to an suv that's actually the mayor of north bay village uh brett latham who's been very very supportive uh, oh, that's great. yeah so he's going to be reposting it um all of North Bay Village has. We have a Facebook group for North Bay Village residents. So, so there's a Facebook group, um, the town hall and the mayor are supportive of you. You had also mentioned that, are they making available to you email addresses as well? Yes, they are. They, they told me that, well, they, I mean, this was even before this epidemic. They said that, that it was just public information if I want the email addresses of all the residents of North Bay Village. So I'll be, I'll be getting that so that we can start targeting that. Yeah. That, that's, you know, the, the point here sometimes is... Oh, you, you know, broke up again. You're frozen. No, no problem. Um, well, uh, well, we're going to move on just because we um, have a lot to cover. But um, Anna, stick around. Thank you very much. Um, one other thing I just wanted to mention um, is that um, a lot of uh, towns and municipalities are looking for ways to support their local small businesses, especially ones that do geographically based stuff, retail and storefront. And so if you, you can't get it if you don't ask. And so uh, Anna was bringing up the fact that they have an email list, which we know now is much more effective than ever before, um, that they're willing to share that she can then use for her email marketing. Um, she also can leverage that um, for Facebook advertising, Google advertising, uh, targeted ads for folks in the local community. Uh, Marcelo Salop also asked about geofencing. So geofencing just means targeting, targeting a geographic area so that only people in that geography who live in that geography would actually see the ad. And that's also another uh, thing that's uh, done through Facebook and Instagram advertising as well as Google advertising. So you have a tremendous number of tools uh, at your fingertips. We focus uh, our 12 week program on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram advertising, and the geofencing is a big part of that. So we show businesses how they can do it, but you can do it uh, in a lot of other uh, places as well. Um, so wanted to now take a minute. Um, you know, I've been reflect. I've been speaking to a lot of business owners, um, and uh, I wanted to reflect a little bit on some marketing tips and marketing principles um, that uh, I feel could be very helpful. Uh, in terms of thinking about what you're doing uh, in this moment. So um, the first one is, as we discussed earlier, customer behavior has changed fundamentally. People are teleworking, student, students are home from school. And what I've heard a lot is people say things like, um, why uh, and by the way, Chiara, I, I realize I forgot to get to your question about um, the uh, margarita delivery. Um, so um, I uh, hopefully, uh, Anna Robbins, if you could answer uh, in the chat, uh, Chiara was asking, did you have to get um, any special licensing to be able to actually do your margaritas for delivery? Um, if you could just put that in the chat, that would be great. Um, and and uh, Angel Gonzalez asked earlier about which CRM that um, Raphael used and the CRM he used is called Autopilot HQ. Um, so we know that customer behavior has changed fundamentally. And I put, and maybe forever. The reason why is, for instance, um, even though you, it seems like a lot of people buy online, Walmart is much larger in terms of its retail sales than Amazon is. But what's going to happen is more people are going to try Amazon out, online purchasing out for the first time, because they have to. And I believe that that's going to cause a permanent shift from retail to e-commerce. Because once they're on the platform, many of them will probably become prime members. They're now locked into that way of buying that many of us, quote, early adopters have already done. Same thing with 
telework. I don't think everyone's going to rush back home, rush, rush back to the office when this all ends. Um, you know, teleworking, I think, is now going to become a much more standard practice across businesses of all size. It's more convenient in some cases if it doesn't impact productivity um, or if businesses see ways to have people spend two or three days at the office and the rest of the time working from home. Um, they're building right now all the infrastructure that will allow for that and they're building the processes to allow for that. I just don't see uh, how that that's going to change uh, when suddenly, you know, everyone's going back to work in rush. I, I just don't see that happening. Learning online is another one. Um, many of us are taking an opportunity now to learn online. Um, even those of us like me who grew up in in-person education. Um, so learning online and the business that I run, which is online education, I think people who are in my target demographic, which is 30 and above, but people who do not grow up with digital, I think they're gonna become more and more comfortable with digital marketing, uh, with learning online and learning digital marketing online. So because we're seeing this fundamental shift that may or may not be a forever shift in customer behavior, you must change your marketing. So you must look at how you're communicating with your customers and make sure that you're communicating with them to where they are. I would also add that now is not the time for the hard sell. You know, most people are still kind of getting used to this new normal, um, really thinking more in terms of how can you help um, and how can you communicate in a way um, that's helpful to them rather than uh, the hard sell. Tip number two is start with your audience, what your audiences need right now. So if you're trying to think about what the heck can I talk about online? What, how the heck can I avoid just going dark? And by the way, no business should go dark. Even if you're not able to do work right now, if you're a, uh, you know, a retail store that doesn't have an e-commerce component, uh, you know, where there's a business in our program right now that runs malls, right? Uh, Yet yeah, there's not a heck of a lot for a mall to do uh, right now that doesn't mean that you should not be communicating with your target customer. So for instance, if you're a mall uh, and you have hundreds of businesses that are working with you, you could talk to them about tools to move from retail to e-commerce, um, or you could talk to them about some resources for retailers uh, that are available. So there's a lot that you can do to communicate with your customers that goes beyond just the direct product or service that you sell. So really think about what is your audience or your, what do your audiences need? And there are different audiences and then try to serve those audiences. And one big recommendation I would make is do not forget about communication with your employees. Even if your uh, uh, folks are working from home or not working at all, if you want them to come back to you after this, you must be communicating with them on a near daily basis. And for most of you every day. You want them to know that you're there, that you're thinking about them, and that you're keeping them abreast of how this larger uh, situation is impacting their uh, individual lives. And then finally, you know, Anna Robbins doesn't right now have a way to take orders online. She had been relying on Postmates and other options because she was primarily a in-person, you know, sit down, fast, casual restaurant. Now is the moment that Anna can pick up that project that was probably sitting on the shelf and get a really good online, per, um, online ordering system up and running, get an app going, um, get a process and a system to do it efficiently. Um, this is the moment for those of you who need to revise your website, uh, who want to get started with your social media, now is the moment to do it. Dust off those plans and get started communicating through these digital tools. Many, many small businesses uh, have tended to be uh, really slow to doing this kind of thing, and now is the moment to do it. So I wanted to bring uh, Andreina from Polestar Pilates on. Uh, Andreina was part of cohort seven. Um, she is the COO of a international organization called Polestar that not only runs uh, four or five studio post, uh, Pilates studios in the Miami area, but also is the number one educator worldwide of Pilates instructors, and they provide a certification. So she has kind of two sides of the business. She has one side of the business 
which is uh, offering classes. And you can see that they're offering now virtual Mac classes, but they also are an educator, kind of like BizHack that do does online and in-person education. Um, and so you can see here that they're now giving a 50% discount on almost all of their online courses. Uh, Andreina, welcome. Hi, Dan. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. How are you? Good to see you. You know, we've talked a lot about, you know, the how, you know, a restaurant is transitioning, you know, how Raphael is transitioning to online classes. Um, let's talk about your Polestar educational component. Uh, you've graduated more than 10,000 uh, Pol uh, Pilates instructors worldwide. How are you guys shifting more aggressively into online education? Well, um, thankfully, we have a learning management system that we've um, had for a couple of years now. And what most of, so just to give a little background on, on our courses, are they're Pilates teacher training courses. So most of our teacher trainings were used to being on, um, on site. Uh, we would meet every month for a week and a month and um, ha have the, the labs and all of that. And what we've done with our current cohorts, uh, we're running around, I wanna say 25 uh, courses uh, of people right now across the USA. What we've done is, depending on what module they're in right now, we meet online um, to cover the, the theory part of the training. And uh, we've postponed all the labbing exercises until we can all meet um, in site to test out the equipment and work on each other um, as, a, as a group. Yeah. Um, in tandem, what we've been doing is we've been focusing on our grads, the 10,000 people we have worldwide, and trying to see what types of offering we can give them that's considered continuing education um, for them to apply with their um, client base. So these people are people who already know their body, are um, know how to use the equipment, uh, know enough about the basic Pilates theory that we can just, through uh, virtual classes and workshops, continue to educate them on new, um, new ways of working with a population or how to work online or what things they should, um, how to, new ways or things that they can um, apply to this new virtual, um, delivery of courses. So um, are you seeing an uptick in the purchase of these courses? What? Are you seeing more people buying online courses from you? Yes. So we've seen um, a little, little spike on our, our courses right now. We have around 20 uh, virtual courses um, currently on, in stock. And what we've, do, what we've been doing is going back to the basics of our core curriculum and trying to dissect that and, and convert those into uh, virtual training courses to offer them to either new um, Pilates uh, students or people who wanna, you know, have been, have, haven't, haven't had any training in a little while and are, now that they have spare time, they can go in and watch um, some courses online. That's great. Another question I had for you is, um, you've also moved your studio, you, you run one of the studios and you've moved your um, Pilates reformer classes. Reformer is a piece of equipment that you use to do Pilates to mat classes. Um, how is that going? How is that transition? Been? It's good. Um, we have five studios in, in the U.S. and um, all our clients have been really, really thankful for um, our offerings. We are offering two classes in the mornings and two classes in the evenings, mostly mat classes. And then for those clients who have, a, have the equipment at home, we um, meet 
depending on, it's a small group, it's a group of seven people. Uh, we meet depending on, on their schedule. We host a class with equipment online as well. And are these classes you pay for a la carte or are these are for your members? Um, we most of our members have kept their membership, so we haven't had to do much um, there. They were just they're they're happy to continue with their membership, and as long as we hold classes for them every day. Uh, another thing that we've been doing is we created a new pricing offering for those people who were currently on a Groupon uh, package. So that they can continue once their uh, once their group on is over, they can continue to purchase something that's more. Um, it's a lower cost than what a regular membership would be, right? And, and unlimited for ninety five dollars a month. So I want to take a second. Uh, thank you so much, Andreina, for for that insight. I want to take a second and just make a plug for our three small businesses. Um, if each of you guys could please in the chat put your website um, and so that people know where to go um, if they want to do business with you. Um, one thing to think about is, you know, for Andreina and for Raphael, um, they are right now in a place where they can serve you no matter where you are in the county. So like I have always wanted to send my seven-year-old daughter to Raphael's dance classes and now I can. So please um, support uh, them uh, and uh, everybody else uh, who runs a small business in town, please feel free uh, to put that in the chat as well. Um, now is the moment, guys, to support our small businesses. This is um, going to be brutal, um, you know, for Raph's business, for Andreina's business. Um, it looks like, um, you know, uh, Anna Robbins um, might uh, be able to kind of make it work uh, as long as she's allowed to continue to deliver. Um, but this is the moment now to support small businesses, to try to do direct business, um, even if it's a little less convenient to call versus using Postmates, um, you know, please um, do everything you can, guys, to support these small businesses. Because I can tell you, um, as a small business owner in South Florida, this is a, a really hard and scary time. And your support is just incredibly important to us. Um, I wanted to now um, uh, welcome uh, Rachel Cohen. Um, she works with uh, Miami-Dade Commissioner Eileen Higgins from District 5. Uh, Eileen was actually a graduate of the BizHack program. Um, she then used uh, what she learned to become an instructor in the BizHack program, my first lead instructor. And then because she's a digital marketing whiz, leveraged that to become elected as a Miami-Dade County Commissioner. Um, so she was so generous to send Rachel Cohen. Um, and she's created, uh, Rachel has a resource list for small businesses. All of you guys are going to receive a copy of that. Uh, is part of the email, a link to it. And that list is constantly being updated. Um, Rachel Cohen, if we're a small business, what message would you want to send to us about what's available? Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so what we usually do in our district, and District 5, if you don't know, includes Miami Beach, Little Havana, Downtown, Brickell, Coral Way, a lot of really small local businesses. We send out a monthly resource every single month through email um, called Strictly Business, where we put together a list of classes going on, mostly free programming, grants, loan applications, things like that. Because the situation is changing so rapidly and more organizations are coming forward with resources, we decided that this Google Doc that you're all gonna be receiving was the best way to consistently update all of our business owners. Um, what I would say is that our local organizations are doing a really good job at providing free consultations and assistance with loan applications. Um, in the resource guide, it's, it's organized by local, state, and federal. For our office specifically, we work a lot with Prospera to help our Hispanic business owners. They do a lot of free work, a lot of free um, consultations and sessions with people and they're still open for business. Most of our organizations have, like most of your businesses, adapted and realized ways that they can do consultations through webinars or the phone or FaceTime. They're there for you. Um, I have most of their links in the guide. Um, and I would just encourage you, if you're struggling, if you can't figure out what to do next, please reach out to them because that's what they're there for. 
Um, other things that we're working on in our office is just working with the state and federal representatives of this area. So working a lot with Senator Jose Javier Rodriguez and Congresswoman Donna Shalala to provide more um, programs. So I know on April 1st, Donna Shalala is, is hosting a town hall where she'll be um, discussing the loan applications with a representative from the SBA. So we're gonna be promoting different things on all levels of government that are going on to help you in this, in this resource guide. Um, I will post my email in the chat um, and I can add any of you to our normal newsletter list that we'll be sending out. But this Google Doc that you'll receive after this is gonna be constantly changing and constantly being updated. So please feel free to send me any suggestions. If you know of any resources that aren't included on it, please send them my way and I will update it as I get it. So thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for the time and obviously for the work that you guys are doing. Um, I wanted to share, um, you know, BizHack does digital marketing training. And so I wanted to share a couple of resources that are specific to digital marketing um, that could be helpful to you guys. Um, so Facebook has launched a $100 million uh, small business grant program. I'm assuming that most of this money, they haven't given a ton of detail around it yet, uh, but I'm assuming most of that money is going to be advertising credits, but Facebook is getting a big bump in usage. So if you have something to advertise, this small business grants program can help you. Of course, you do need to know how to advertise. That's what we teach. Um, Facebook also has created a business resource hub, which is a full list of all of their uh, resources for small businesses. Google has done something similar. They call it the resource hub. They have um, a tremendous amount uh, of, of, of tip sheets and, and resources uh, for you. Uh, I've been waiting to see if Google was gonna announce something similar like a small business fund uh, or small business grants, and I haven't seen it yet. Um, so I, I would expect that that'll come out shortly. It seems like you know, Google does rely so much on businesses like yours for their advertising. I'd be surprised if they didn't do something too. Um, but it's not just Google and Facebook. LinkedIn, Yelp, Hootsuite, Shopify, Moz, WeTransfer, Box, and more have been offering um, free, reduced price services, um, uh, uh, in some cases, funds for small businesses. Uh, we've been collecting a list of all of those at try.bizhack.com slash COVID-19. Um, similar to the list of resources uh, that Rachel is doing for state, federal, uh, and, and local uh, resources for small businesses, we're collecting digital marketing resources. And this is, uh, leads to my bonus tip of the day, which is if you're using a software, ask them about their COVID-19 program. Um, you know, so like uh, if you're using a CRM or if you're using, uh, you know, a technology platform, if you say to them, look, I'm a small business, uh, I'm struggling right now, what can you do for me? Uh, I almost guarantee uh, that they're going to come up with something, maybe forgiving your um, fee for a few months. It's worth the call. It's worth the Google search to see what they're doing uh, because just about every software company is offering something right now. Um, and, and just don't be shy to ask. It's, it now is the moment. Um, I wanted to, um, you know, I, I, I am just inundated and overwhelmed with an enormous amount of uh, amazing responses. Uh, thank you, all of you who filled out our survey. Um, so many uh, insights and ideas and questions that we definitely can't uh, address in this first webinar, but uh, our plan is to do more. Um, I did want to share um, one thing from uh, Michelle uh, Banesh, I think that that's the way uh, you pronounce it, from Menu Men. She wrote, hoping I'm the last menu company standing so we will gain market share. So the point there is that this is a moment, uh, obviously, uh, of, um, of challenge, but also uh, of opportunity. And we're going to strike that theme here in a minute as we wrap up. So. The first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to announce that we're going to be doing another community webinar next week. It's Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Uh, Bruce Turkel uh, has so generously agreed. Uh, he's a branding expert. Uh, we're calling it What Now? Um, so if you're interested, please click that link and sign up. Send it to friends. Um, we actually uh, hit capacity 
uh, which I never expected that we were going to do. We had more than 100 people who wanted to join us, so we'll find a solution uh, for that. Uh, BizHack is also still in business. We've moved all of our program offerings uh, online. Um, we have traditionally done in-person classes. We'll transition back to in-person when the moment arrives, but we're going to be continuing our online, pro uh, our, our 12 week program through online. Um, I do not want to be selling right now, but I do want to say that I am a small business. I'm scared, uh, like many of you, about what's going to happen next. If you think there's someone uh, that you know who could benefit from learning uh, how to market themselves online, how to build up their digital presence, uh, that's a link to our syllabus and our application. Um, and then finally, I wanted to leave with a note. Uh, our lead instructor for the current BizHack 12-week program, which we're offering online, is Alex De Carvalho, formerly of IBM and Constant Contact. And he, he uh, pointed me to this just amazing quote uh, and this amazing thing from uh, Chinese. In, when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger and the other represents opportunity. Um, and I just want to leave by saying now is a moment when we are all in danger and we have unprecedented opportunity. And it's really a matter of frame of mind. If you're in a siege mentality and you're looking at just the erosion of your revenue and you're asking yourself, how am I going to survive this? Um, you're definitely feeling the danger part of crisis. But there's an opportunity part of crisis as well. There's an opportunity for you to reinvent your business, to serve your customers, to think creatively about how to transition your business into an online setting. And I just want to say that there is also a community of us who are working on this with you. That's what BizHack is all about, is creating a community of online marketers and, and businesses online to help you think about how to deal with this incredible transition. And so I wanted to leave you uh, with these words, which is focus as much as you can on the opportunity. I wanna say thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Uh, I am uh, so grateful to all of you for being here. Thank you to Andreina, uh, to Raphael, and to Anna Robbins. I wish you guys the best of luck with your businesses and everyone's business that's online. There were a lot of questions that you asked that we weren't able to get to in this really packed setting. Um, we're going to look for ways to continue to answer those, uh, whether it's on social media, on our blog, on our website, or, or perhaps in future webinars. Stay in touch. We have your email addresses. All of you should have uh, in your inboxes now a copy of this presentation, a list of tips for remote work, a list of tips for uh, digital marketing resources, the county resource list uh, of all the different things that you can do uh, and a link to RSVP for next week's webinar. Uh, looking forward to Brewster Kell next Wednesday at 1230. Uh, and with that, thank you guys. Please send your uh, best uh, regards in chat and we'll see you really shortly. Thank you.